welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracks will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Greetings to you, my friend. Welcome here to the middle of the week, first week here in December. I appreciate so much you making Bible Tract Echoes a part of your day. Now, right now, my Bible is open. It is open to 2 Corinthians in chapter 5. If possible, pick up your own Bible and turn there, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. You may also want to get a pen and paper ready. You can jot down some notes. I really do strive to make the Bible passage we are looking at very clear and useful, and some notes that you take may aid you later, not only to further study and remind yourself what we said, but also perhaps pass it on and strengthen somebody else's life. But with that pen and paper handy, you can also jot down in a few minutes our contact information. I have a gospel tract uh, I want to emphasize, but I want to put into your hand a free sample packet of our gospel tracts, and I'll say more about that here in just a moment. A few years ago, a businessman told me about hiring a new worker. He really needed the worker. But then the employer said it would take him about a month to unlearn the worker before he could really train him. Now, perhaps you understand that employer's struggle. As I continue our study in prophecy here, I feel, well, somewhat like that employer. You see, some believers have either been taught wrongly or they've come to their own conclusions, wrong conclusions about certain Bible events that are part of prophecy. One of these events is called the Judgment Seat of Christ. Now, that very title has over the years encouraged some wrong ideas. Some Bible teachers now have gone away from using the title Judgment Seat of Christ to use the term Bema Seat instead. That's the Greek words behind the words Judgment Seat. Here's where we are headed today in the broadcast. At the end of the church age, when church era saints are raptured up to be with Christ, what happens next? Well, two things, really. Number one, the judgment seat of Christ will happen. And number two, the marriage supper of the Lamb. For today, let's focus in on the judgment seat of Christ. Get your Bible, 2 Corinthians in chapter 5. I mentioned gospel tracts a moment ago. Do you know what a gospel tract is? A gospel tract is simply a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. We have for 80 years been publishing gospel tracts, different ones. We have about 40 in that sample packet I want to give to you. 40 different tracts, each giving the gospel. They just come at the gospel from a different vantage point. And that's why as you get the sample pack and read them, you're going to say, oh, there's a track I can use to give to this person or that person, you're going to find some tracks in there that you say, well, I don't know if I want to use that one. Wonderful. But gospel tracks are a powerful evangelism tool. Did you know that in the last 14 years, we can verify that over a half a million people have received Christ, and I mean publicly received Christ as Savior after receiving one of our gospel tracts, and we're not the only gospel tract company. The gospel tract in my hand right now is entitled, What God Wants Everyone to Know. What God Wants Everyone to Know. This particular gospel tract is one that I used in a new visitor packet when somebody visited our church uh, that was when I was pastoring back in Florida uh, before I came here to the ministry. What God wants everyone to know is a great track for people who have basically zero background in the Bible. Perhaps they didn't grow up going to church. It answers questions like, who is God? Where did he come from? Where did Adam and Eve live? It goes on to ask about what is sin? Who is Jesus? And then how can you go to heaven? It's a great 
beautiful track. You need to get it. Please let me send it to you. It's in the sample packet. At the end of the broadcast, my announcer will give three ways to contact us by which you can give us your name and mailing address, or you can go to our web address, which is BibleTracksInc.org. That word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S, BibleTracksInc.org. All right, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10 says this, For we, speaking to believers now, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that every one may receive the things done in his body, whether that he so hath done, whether it be good or bad. That's the only verse I want to read there. Now, if you are like me and have been declared a child of God by receiving Christ, we call it the new birth. If you are a believer like me, then you and I are subject to only three judgments. On Monday's broadcast, I talked about seven of them, but you and I are subject to three of them. Number one is Calvary, the Calvary judgment. That's where we were judged as sinners. Notice the S word, sinners. The Calvary judgment, we were judged as sinners. Jesus became our substitute and we were judged by God who let our penalty for sin fall on Christ. He bore our sins in his body on the tree according to 1 Peter chapter 2. That's judgment one, Calvary judging, we were judged as sinners. Number two is corrective judgment. There we're judged as saints, we're judged as saints. Hebrews chapter 12, verses five through 11 says that whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. When we fail to deal with known sin in our lives, God will correct us. And all of this is part of his work to make us more like Jesus. And you, by the way, you can tie in 1 Corinthians 11 here about judgment we do at communion time. The third judgment we are liable for is what I call the crown judgment. The crown judgment. Here we are judged as servants. At Calvary, we were judged as sinners. Corrective judgment, we are judged as saints. At the crown judgment, we are judged as the servants of Christ. This is the judgment we're reading about here in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 10. The judgment seat of Christ is not, is not, I repeat, it is not to determine if you and I are going to enter heaven. That issue is settled at the Calvary judgment, the day we receive Jesus as our Savior by faith. This judgment, the judgment seat, is to evaluate our service as a follower of Christ, I call it the crown judgment because the rewards that we can earn for serving Christ are called crowns in the New Testament. I talk about unlearning things a moment ago. What we must unlearn here is that this judgment is only for believers. Nothing about unsaved people happens here. And again, it's not to discover if the person is going to enter heaven. That was determined uh, at Calvary. This one is going to simply determine the rewards we receive as a result of serving Christ before we died. Sadly, 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 many believers fail to grasp their present responsibility and their future accountability before Jesus. Maybe I should say that again. Many believers fail to grasp their present responsibility and their future accountability before Christ. Now, having received Jesus as our Savior, believers assume, many do, that, well, any responsibility they had has been completed. That is nowhere near the truth. So what happens at this judgment seat of Christ? Well, 2 Corinthians 5.10 says that we will all give an account of of our lives. At salvation, we became the slave of Jesus. Now, you may gristle at that term slave, but don't. You shouldn't gristle at it. The word translated servants in the New Testament epistles is better translated for clarity by the word slave. Why are we slaves of Jesus? Well, 1 Corinthians 6 says that he bought us. He uses terms of the slave market there. But if your Bible is open here to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, look now at verse 15. 
Here's what it says, and I'm quoting now, and that Jesus died for all, that they which live, speaking to believers, should not henceforth live unto themselves or for themselves, but unto him, capital H, unto him which did died for them and rose again, end quote. So, since we were bought to live for Christ, don't be shocked that an evaluation day is coming. Three other cross references that go with this judgment seat of Christ are here. Jot them down. You got your pen and paper, Annie? Jot them down. One of them is this, a cross reference, Colossians 3, 24 and 25. Colossians 3, 24 and 25. A second cross reference is 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 8 through 15. Again, 1 Corinthians 3, 8 to 15. And the last one is the little book of 2 John and just verse 8. 2 John 8. Now come back here to our verse here in 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 10. This not only tells us that we're going to give an accounting of our lives, but it says our examiner is Christ. This event is called the judgment seat of Christ. Romans chapter 14, verses 7 to 12 says that we do not live unto ourselves, but we live unto the Lord. Then it asks this question in the passage there. Why dost thou judge thy brother, and why dost thou set at naught thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. I've stopped reading there, but verse 12 then goes on and says this. So then every one of us shall give an account of himself unto God. Jesus Christ is God. At the judgment seat of Christ, believers give account to Christ who is God. Now, I do not have the time to walk through the passage here, but you ought to read it. It's Revelation 1, 13 to 18. Did you jot it down? Revelation 1, 13 to 18. That's where the apostle John in the book of the Revelation saw the Lord Jesus. He saw them though, Jesus in his judicial appearing. He saw him in his judicial appearing. You see, there's a lot of things that are used. There's symbols used to describe Jesus and his coming. But wait a minute. Why is he coming? Revelation chapter 1, this will shock you, is followed by Revelation chapter 2 and chapter 3. What happens in chapter 2 and chapter 3? Local churches are judged. So Jesus is coming to judge local churches. And what is described there is Jesus in his judicial appearance. And when John saw Jesus, he fainted. Jesus said unto John that John had nothing to fear. But what John saw was the judge of believers in all his power and all his purity and all his all-knowingness. And just as the seven churches in Revelation 2 and 3 were judged by Jesus, so too we will, as believers, each believer, be judged for our service at the judgment seat of Christ. We'll be able to see rewards, but we're also going to have to suffer loss because of missed opportunities. Now, I can't go back and relive yesterday, but I do know this. I can live today and take up the opportunity to serve Christ I have today. Let's use them, believer friend, to serve Christ. Great rewards are coming. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.